Hi everyone, it's Jerry. I'd like to share a game with you from the most recent season of the Top Chess Engine Championship. So this is the game between Leela Chess Zero and Stockfish. Season 21 Super Final. Uh, game 71 of their 100 game match. Uh, I've been staring at this game for what feels like close to 10 hours now. Not all in one sitting, but with my own engine, experimenting, just found this one more and more interesting. Tested out a lot of different variations. This video will be much more than me simply sharing the moves of a game. I feel that I grew as a player, and maybe by this video's end, if you're sticking around for it all, you too can benefit. Uh, these Top Chess Engine Championship games are some of the highest quality games you'll find. They're not always easy to wrap one's head around. Um, I don't quite get that impression with this particular game because, mm, well, I believe this is largely the case because of the central structure. It's a static one, and as a result, there really isn't a wide variety of moves to be choosing from throughout. Comes off as a more strategic game, a battle of plans. Now, this last move, Bishop G4, is what denotes the Samajan variation of the King's Indian defense. After D5 and Knight A5, this is where game 71 began. This is where the engines are now on their own. Um, before I look at what is played next, I'd like to touch on this particular move that's in, in at least one of the databases. It's been played thousands of times, and it's not good. Bishop captures knight. Um, the reply, bishop captures bishop, has been played over a thousand times. That reply is also not good. Uh, why is that? Well, it's because after knight to e5, there's white experience is a problem on c4. c4, by the way, in this game, is the main focal point. There will be a lot of pressure applied to it, and white will need to react properly. Um, how do you defend c4 in this position? Well, if you try b3, you run in, white would be running into these tricks. You know, there's a problem on this diagonal. So, uh, also, if white tries to babysit the pawn with the queen, that runs into knight f to d7, looking to next kick the queen away, and then maybe win the pawn outright. And there's even a, a line I stumbled upon where if the queen gets greedy, well, she's going to get hunted. Here's a quick queen trap for you. She's dead. Okay. My point here is that capturing on f3 with the bishop is not good because white can recapture with the pawn. This is not a deficiency for white to have the doubled pawns. It's nice to have e2 vacant for the queen. Now, knight e5 or knight a5, queen could go here. And this pawn could even look forward to going to f4, open up the bishop's eyes in that way. And control e5 from all minor pieces, while not compromising the king's side structure at all. Right? If it's the f2 pawn going to f4 and there's the e pawn still around, you're a bit more weakened on your second rank. Not the case here. Okay. Knight a5, the first move of this game is b3. This is how white's defending c4. Now, just a moment ago, I was pointing out some tricks against the the knight and the rook. There are no good tricks in this particular position. I know I've been in this uh, very position before as white in some blitz or bullet games, and I've shied away from playing b3 because I thought there would be a problem here on the diagonal. There is not a problem. This trick is not working here because we can take the knight with our knight. And after bishop takes rook, we have bishop d2. A very nice double attack against the knight and bishop. And soon, white will be playing a position up two minor pieces versus the rook. Completely winning for white. What's played? c5. And from here, bishop g5. In 
many of the um, human games that I've had a look at from this opening, I saw that the bishop was eventually deployed to b2. Um, it's not a bad move, uh, but the bishop is a bit more vulnerable on b2 instead of g5. And why do I think this? Well, it's because this is the side of the board, the queen side, where black will be playing. Black will be striving for b5. Black has the furthest advanced pawn on c5, and every furthest advanced pawn likes to have a pawn right next to it. Similarly, this guy will one day like to have this guy right next to it. Duos are strong in the game. This is where black wants to play, where they have space. This is the space, this is the space. And once the b-file is opened, you could see that the rook will be, however indirect, maybe directly, uh, putting pressure on the b2 point. So in this game, it goes to g5, not with the intention to one day give up the bishop for knight. Uh, in the game, we had a6. If questioned, we're not doing this. We're not giving up the bishop for knight. Instead, white would be falling back to d2. In fact, the initial deployment to d2 was also a, a very strong move as well, instead of going to g5. Uh, if, if h6 is in and the bishop goes back to d2, white is in a way saying, aha, your bishop on g7 now has a responsibility. You can't go too far. I might just swipe that h6 pawn. To illustrate not making the very best moves here, but the quickest way to show that there's a restriction placed on this guy. This typical maneuver of the king knight sweeping into e5, well, now you can't recapture with the piece, can you? There goes the h6 pawn. So something needs to be done with h6 before black can make some maneuver like that. Okay, in the game, black carries on with queenside play, prep work for b5, h3, and there are several bishop moves that I would like to touch on here. Um, first one is the capture. We've seen it before. This would be to the way to recapture. Uh, in, in the game, the bishop goes back home. But yeah, if this were once more taking with the pawn, it's nice to have this. It's also nice to have this square for the bishop to secure c4. Again, there's going to be some pressure on that point soon enough. Okay, and if it goes here, well, it's dead after g4. Let's have a look at this one, bishop d7. Uh, this is, if the bishop is posted on d7, uh, at first glance, this move says to me, ah, okay, you're, you're supporting this b5 push. But now d7 is not opened up for the knight. And so what this means is white's central push of e4 and e5 will hit that much harder. Black wants to be in a spot to meet e4 with knight d7, controlling this quick e5 break. So bishop on d7 doesn't allow for that. One other variation, let's say the bishop goes to f5. This is one of the more human-like moves. This is prep work for knight e4. I really liked experimenting with this particular move because I got to see a, a, a pretty slick reply by white here. I really like this next move. Uh, in reply to bishop f5, you ready for this one? Not all that common. Queen e1. Now, the first thought that ran through my mind is, oh, okay, the queen on e1. What, what is she doing? She's supporting e4. But there's an additional point. The queen has some function along this diagonal. She observes the knight on a5. And I'll uh, be highlighting a variation where there's, uh, there can be a problem on that square. So, uh, how do, first of all, how does black stop the e4 push? You know, if you, you just make some rook move or you, you continue to go for this, e4 is in there. And well, what, do, what do you do here? There's knight takes knight, knight takes knight. Bishop takes rook. Now there's this nice move, knight takes pawn taking advantage of the pin and then you could take the bishop next white is winning this it's already reading as a plus five so let's say instead of instead of rook to b8 let's say the knight hops in straight away once more we can have this trick 
If bishop takes rook, we have knight takes d6. I'll carry it out a few more moves because we get to see we get to see queen e1 for a second time. White right here is ready to get the piece back with bishop h6 if that's shut down with f6. Once more, we could have the queen go to e1 from a1 this time, hitting the knight and supporting e4. Uh, black is basically dead. <laughs> this position is really, really bad. This knight is clueless, and these rooks are staring at each other, asking, what are we supposed to do? There's absolutely no play here for Team Black. Okay, anyhow, this this is a pretty slick move, queen to e1. Also, important to note, is that when you make this queen e1 move, you need to be prepared to play a position type where you're down the exchange. And it involves this guy being exchanged for the rook. So let me, let me highlight this move once more. And instead of taking the rook straight away, let's say bishop takes knight is on board. There would follow rook c1. And now if this bishop goes hunting for the rook, it's okay to allow your rook to be captured by the dark square bishop, the key defender for the black king side. White could pursue an attack against the king with h4. Let's say black carries on with this play on the queen side. And here's a slick variation right here. Let's say rook b8. Look at this one. I'm highlighting this particular line because it's a nice way to demonstrate the weaknesses of the dark squares. How about that move? Hits the queen and threatens a mate in two. Okay, anyhow, I want to give some sense as to how we could be coping with this knight plant on e4, queen e1. It's a really good move here. All right, in the game, it was the bishop going all the way back home. e4 on board. Black doesn't want to see e5, so knight d7. White gets off the diagonal, and, well, Gets off the diagonal, supports the knight, and supports c4. White is anticipating this pressure on the c4 pawn. And from here we have b5. Pop quiz. How, will, how would you react to the b5 move? Feel free to pause the video. Okay. Uh, in the computer's eyes, the top suggestion is to grab the pawn like this. But if you do this, you're basically going to have to play down the exchange. It still says it's better for white, but yeah, this follow-up move of bishop to a6, black has some nice play on the queen side and is soon going to be getting the rook. You could defend the knight, but this is way, way, way too weakened. If black simply regains the pawn, yeah, this is this is an excellent position for black, so... Uh, white would have to play this one, and I don't know. It's not the same as the earlier uh, shared variation where white was down the exchange and it was the dark square bishop that was uh, given up for for the rook. It's the light square bishop given up for the rook here, so not as clear. Uh, the approach taken by Leela is a very instructive one and is uh, one of the main... Uh, this this was this was one of the main moves that first grabbed my attention about this game. To not go ahead and grab on b5, and instead make a defensive move. Uh, what is this defensive move? Queen d3. There she goes, move 14, and there she will stay until move 34. It is the first of uh, several defensive moves several defensive moves that white will be playing in this game and it will seem like black has some initiative because there's some pressure being applied to c4 but eventually um that pressure um you know there's only so much pressure that could be applied to c4 and once it's neutralized black runs out of productive moves um so this is a nice controlled approach to simply secure c4, and by securing c4, you stay rock solid on d5, your most important pawn, d5, that's going nowhere. Okay, the approach here is rook b8. 
bishop d2. So voluntarily dropping the bishop back to d2 where it observes the b4 square. White's anticipating the rook will be pivoting there, wants to take that square away from the rook. Uh, something I questioned right around this point here is when I saw b5, uh, I, I saw the reply was queen to d3. And I questioned, well, instead of, instead of this b5 move, suppose, suppose black plays h6 now. Uh, are we still going to drop back to d2? Uh, if the bishop's on d2 and then b5 is played, you know, now we can't get to d3 in one move. Is that going to bother us? What would we do there? So I, I want to highlight how we can be following up if h6 is flicked in there and the bishop is on d2 and only then b5 is in. Uh, how's this for a move? You ready? Knight e2. And now we have this idea to me, b takes c with the recapture straight away, or we could even consider queen to e1. And we get to see this battery towards a5 really playing an excellent role in the game. Once more, this queen on e1 is uh, one of those aesthetic moves. I just really like the queen e1 move. Um, now, what does black do? <laughs> uh, if the knight has to fianchetto, uh, this was the side of the board black was supposed to be playing on. Something has clearly gone way wrong for team black. Uh, also, so if this is on board, if the knight has to go to b7, black is dead. This is not the way to play. Something's definitely gone wrong. Similarly, if let's say rook b8 is in, we can also have queen e1, and this is even worse, right? The, the rook can't even see the knight is there, or even, let's say, if it's shut down with b4. Now, how do you even play on the queen side? You have to undo all your moves. Knight has to retreat. Rook has to come back over. a5, a4. Finally, you get a break, but you're probably going to be getting killed in just a few moves on the king, on the king side somehow. These, these breaks with e5... It's not the way to go. So the main point is this battery of the queen and bishop can be super, super effective in neutralizing black's play on the queen side. Okay. B5 on board, queen d3, rook b8, bishop d2 voluntarily. Chop, chop, rook b4. Let me back up. After rook to b4, so we had knight d1. Yeah, this... This maneuver right here is pretty neat. The rook is there to defend. The knight has an eye on e3. The rook is hit. I had a test. I wanted to test out a different move by the rook. And this one right here. How, how are we reacting if the rook goes to b2 is a question I had. Um, the proper way to react to rook b2 is to challenge the rook right away. And then I, my eyes were opened some after this this move right here because instinctually my recapture you know what what's what's the natural way to recapture you take with the rook and say aha uh there's only one open file and i control it there's a problem with that and it's that this knight can now get to b6 and how are you defending c4 you're not so if the rook went to the second rank instead of b4 you challenge it, and then you're prepared to recapture with the knight. And now this is opening up the bishop to c a5. So there is no knight b6. You would take the knight. Um, again, a lot of attention needs to be given to c4. Uh, another line from this point, I questioned, well, suppose the queen looks to sneak in and put some pressure on c4. You can't do it right now, but let's say... This queen b6 move, preparing to meet knight c3 with queen b4. This is not a good path for team black. This is, a way, this is another way the queen could end up getting trapped. The black queen in this case showed an earlier one where it was the white queen. Um, this queen is now stuck. Bishop f1 is right around the corner. Um, how do you save the queen? It points out you have to go here with the knight. 
And eventually we have this move here, knight d1, threatening the knight. And there's now two different ways to maybe track down the queen, bishop c3 or bishop e3. So I want to give you a taste, at least, for a different pivot square by this rook. Now that there's an open file, there's only two squares to cover, b4 and b2. We had a look at b2 in the game, rook b4. Knight d1 follows. Rook a4, out of the bishop's view. Rook c2, some more defense. This guy's under control by the rook. They're offsetting one another. This rook is also quite limited. Doesn't have uh, another square to go to, so uh, there's some tricks we're going to soon find out over that c4 square. Let's get some moves in here. Knight e5, knight exchange, king to h2. My initial impression of king h2 was, oh, okay, white is maybe ready to play f4. And then after the reply, bishop d4, it's not hitting with check. Um, I'm not so sure that's really the point. Um, the F, F2 pawn does not get rolling uh, so quick in this game. I came across one variation where it points out that h4 and bishop h3 can be an idea. Uh, so king h2 in this game, bishop d7, knight e3, and bishop to d4. And from here we have h4. Now, one of the most common moves you will find in this position instead of h4 is rook to b1. This is not a good move. And this was one of those eye-opening points for me uh, with this game. It seems completely sensible, right? There's maybe... maybe a, too much of a robotic type of thinking on my part, right? One open file. Control open file. It's not good, though. Uh, it's under control, but only very, very temporarily is it under control. If it is the case where the king rooks are exchanged, black will find it much easier to have the queen enter white's house, getting into b1, exerting additional pressure on a2, the white position can easily collapse if the white queen if the black queen enters white's house. So white ne white needs to take some care uh, about this next move. Going to b1 is not a good idea. Let me illustrate how this move can backfire. Let's say queen c7, super sensible, ready to get to rook b8. Let's say h4 is in there. Rook b8, rook exchange. Let's say white swings the bat completely around with this h4, h5 engagement with g6. Uh, the queen could enter right now on b1. It says even better was to capture the knight, but we get to see now that there's this super invasive queen. Not easy to cope with this. So we don't go to the b file, not just yet at least. Instead, it's h4. And now we have a mysterious looking queen to e8. <laughs> um, queen e1 was played for white uh, in some fun variations. In the actual game, uh, queen e8 is on board. Took me a little bit to make sense of queen to e8. This post has an influence on both sectors, king side and queen side. We'll see its influence in the game. Uh, well, there are some tricks on the queen side. On the king side, it's it's preventing white from playing h5 here. This consistent follow-up h5 right now would not be a good move because black can play e5. And the king is going to be a little bit more vulnerable. White wants to be able to meet this potential break with e6 or e5 with a capture. But now the queen is observing the king side. Right after this capture, the black queen is doing pretty well. There's no longer an h-pawn around for white, and there are some checks for black, none for white currently. Okay. Queen e8 discourages h5, and there's some 
indirect influence on the B5 square. Only at this stage do we have rook B1. Now just moments ago I pointed out rook B1 it could be neutralized, the black queen could enter. It's a little bit different now. If black wants to neutralize the rook, it needs to come uh, a tempo down. Um, let me first point out that if black tries to play with e6 or e5 here, there's the reply of rook b6. We see that the queen is no longer observing b6. Rook b6 would be a good follow-up, striking a6, a6, and d6. Now, suppose black plays it a tempo, tempo down, plays queen to, a, queen to a8. Next up, rook to b8. We can have h5, and after rook b8, you ready for this next move? White says, no, not exchanging rooks. I'm going to go to a file that will soon open. Rook h1. I just, I find moves like this really cool. Rook, queen e1 earlier, this move right here, another case, rook h1. That's really sweet. <laughs> Not giving up, uh, well, giving up control of the b file and instead focusing on the soon to be opened h file. White is going after the king here. Let's say rook b6, we can have bish a bishop exchange first. Let's say black doubles, king g2. Rook b1, another case where white could say, nope, I'm not going to exchange rooks just yet. I could, well, I could first capture right here and then play rook to h4. This is completely winning for white. There's the idea to exchange dark square bishops and give checkmate on h8. Yeah. White is not making it so easy for the black queen of all pieces to enter on b1. Um, this, this idea to form some battery is not really a threat at all. I had a look at this variation because it would just end up being one check. No problem. The king can simply go to F3. Yeah. It's plus 19 and climbing. I think it's soon going to read a mate. But, um, anyhow, some, some idea as to how we can be coping with the threat to exchange king rooks. White should be ducking that particular exchange. Okay, from here we have bishop takes knight, and not the typical recapture. Uh, this was another super instructive point for me. In the game we had bishop takes knight. Now, if we simply recapture with the bishop, we get to see how this queen plays a role on the queen side from its e8 post. What is this trick? Knight takes c4, rook takes knight, bishop b5, rook takes bishop, queen takes on b5. And what's going to happen with this particular variation is we end up with two bishops versus rook and pawn imbalance. It reads as a plus one for white, but this is apparently going to be a draw with best play. Bishop takes pawn could be met with rook b4. Looking next at rook a4. A drawn position. You'll know with this imbalance, the black king does not experience any problems. He's not going to be attacked. It's a more technical position here with this imbalance. I'm drawing attention to this uh, because if black tries this particular trick on c4 one move sooner, which is to say before the queen is on e8, um, this would not be a good choice for team black to go in for the capture on c4 because this imbalance right here Two bishops versus rook and pawn. Well, the queens are still on board, and there is a problem with king safety. There can be some dark square issues, a break in the center. Yeah, this is this is a scary position for Team Black. This is a this is a winning position for White with the queens on. Okay, Queen E8. 
Rook b1, bishop takes knight in the game, met with the atypical reply, bishop takes knight. And from here we have bishop takes f2. And if black captures the bishop, um, well, I'm sorry, if, if white captures this bishop, this, this is what was played in the game, rook takes bishop and rook takes bishop. But I had a question for myself at this stage. Uh, why doesn't white go ahead and win the pawn back? Currently, white's down a pawn. White could win the pawn back with the move bishop c3. Um, there's only one reply here. Bishop d4, the only way to save the bishop. And this is how white could win the pawn back. Isn't this good? For white, queen in the center, materials now balanced. White doesn't want to win the pawn back. Why? Well, with this variation, you'll note that black, the pawn that white won was the c5 pawn. White wants to keep the black c5 pawn around. Let's see why. <laughs> this is really cool. Um, the move played in the game, rook takes bishop, rook takes bishop, c5 is occupied by a pawn, which means this rook <laughs> is now stuck on the edge. It doesn't have access to c5. It is restricted to the a file alone. a5, a4, the only safe squares for the rook. Uh, black is basically playing down a rook. Black's up a pawn, <laughs> but... Down a rook. You only go here. That's slick. It's a, you know, this was a candidate for the title to the video, you know, Leela Traps, Stockfish's Rook. Um, yeah, this is a big problem now. Okay, let's see how play follows. First, entering on the seventh rank. From here, queen d8. If the rook is challenged with bishop c8, the rook would be maintained on the 7th, keeping pressure on e7. It's queen d8. Now a3. The queen has the responsibility for defending the pawn now, which frees up this rook to go elsewhere. Normally you wouldn't want to allocate the queen to the defense of a pawn like this, but she's not really inconvenienced. She's still nice and central, guarding base points. Why not give her another job? The rooks are going to next look to enter Black's camp. Okay. Also, an additional point I only noticed much, much later in reviewing this game is that in one of the variations, the rook is now, you know, not able to maybe one day take the pawn on a2 and say check. Okay, it's on a3 now. Okay, from here we have bishop c8. Now, when the queen was on e8, I said if bishop c8, you would maintain the rook on the seventh rank. Not the case here. We have rook b8. White looks to one day form a battery on the eighth rank. Uh, why not rook a7 here? Uh, it's because black would be able to get away with a, uh, a perpetual attack against this rook. So I, I found this one to be pretty neat. The queen could go to b6 and allow white to give up e7 and simply return home. And we have this, this going on. Here, uh, the rook could get hunted. There's some fancy line there where it's still some draw, even though the rook is tracked down. But yeah, the main idea here is that if you try and maintain the rook on the seventh rank, there is uh, this little resource on b6 and d8 with the black queen. So in the game, it's rook b8, queen d7 out of the pin, white doubles on the b-file, and now looks to double on the 8th rank. It's getting pretty serious for black now, um, just a moment away now from forming this battery, and the bishop may never uh, be able to move, so... Uh, this may be the last chance for the bishop to move, but it's not a good choice here. So if the bishop tries to get out of the line of fire, bishop d7, that there's a problem there. 
chop on f8. And then you go to c3, hitting the rook. And threatening mate in one. Game over for black. So you can't move bishop. What's tried is g5, breaking down the king's side structure, eliminate the h-pawn, give some checks on the h-file. This is black's attempt. Pawn takes, queen takes, battery is formed on the 8th rank. This rook is still stuck. There's no c5 square to help out. From here we have queen h6. Yeah, black's attempt in this game is to give some checks. We eventually have a queen exchange, but one last line to uh, discuss is a very human-like one, which is to, uh, let's say, defend c8 like this, queen g4. I want to give you an idea how you can, how white can be reacting to such a move. Uh, I found this to be one of the, the cleaner approaches, queen f3. If there's an, a queen exchange, this bishop will soon fall. So the queen needs to stick around defending the bishop. And if the queen is on d7, now we have this move e5. Looking to maybe open up this diagonal. If there's this capture, this pawn has the ability to move. If black doesn't react to this move at all, let's say passes, we can break down the light squares with e6. And what does black do here? If there's a capture, we can take the bishop, and then we can capture on e6. Queen takes e6, there's bishop h3. That stings. Yeah, that's there's, there's no, no good solution here for black. Some other variation, let's consider, um, instead of this passing move, rook a4, suppose black captures. White can follow up with, once more, a capture on c8, and then bishop to h3. If queen takes bishop, king takes queen, rook takes rook, d6. Hitting the rook, and this guy's passed, one way or the other. No good solution here for black. Mm, this imbalance, queen and pawn, queen and pass pawn versus two disconnected rooks. Yeah, the rooks are no match for the queen and passed pawn. If here we can take... Um, yeah, if here guarding all 7th rank squares we can push. We have also this g4 check. So no good solution for team black with that variation. And one last one to look at is after e6 we can take the rook. Take on e6 and then play queen f6. There's a problem on e6, and there's no solution. Okay. Queen g4, not tried in this game. Instead, we had a check on h6. c1, that's blocked. Queen e3 check, queen f2. And from here, rook takes a3. If more checks followed with, let's say, queen c1, the bishop would block. There are no follow-up checks, and the queen is out of position to defend the bishop. White will soon be winning the bishop. So, again, what is tried? Rook takes a3, and we enter uh, this ending, where white picks up the bishop. The rook is free, it's true, but this one is now gonzo for Team Black. Uh, what do you even try here? Anything else to consider after this if you capture c5 falls? So all white needs to do is keep a, a pawn around, and this extra pawn is going to be the g3 pawn. No way for black to exchange that uh, g3 pawn off. So we just have these final moves coming in. Nothing really exciting from this point on, just the conversion. Pass pawn gets rolling, and... A little bit of a fun way to have this one end. Rook b7 uh, brings us to a six-piece six table base win for Team White. The game goes no further. And yeah, that's the, that's the ball game for this game, 71. So I found this one, uh, yeah, very interesting. I mean, to be sticking around for <laughs> several hours staring at this one. 
I think I touched on most of the variations I wanted to share. Um, yeah, anyhow, I, I, I hope you took something away from this one. Uh, feel free, as usual, to leave any feedback in the comments section below. And that's all for now. Take care.